Good morning everyone, how you doing? A little bit of a different look today because it was pouring down earlier on so I thought I'd put on the big coat, the big guns. My mum bought me this for Christmas, it's very nice isn't it? I really like it. Anyway, uh, we are here today in the forest, the forest of doom, green acres and we've come to find the final resting place of Peter Stringfellow. Now do you remember Peter Stringfellow? Yes, that's him. He is that guy, the one that had all of those clubs, the one that also had all of those licenses where he was allowed to have ladies looking a certain way dancing in his nightclubs. Are you with me? Do you know what I'm on about? I think we're on the same page, aren't we? We know where we're going with this. Um, yeah, Peter Stringfellow, I'll tell you a little bit more about his life real soon. Um, but don't forget today, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell and you'll be notified when we get more uh, videos, new ones coming up as well. So now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Peter Stringfellow. Peter James Stringfellow, 17th of October 1940 to the 7th of June 2018, was an English businessman who owned several nightclubs. Stringfellow was born in the City General Hospital, Sheffield, South Yorkshire on the 17th of October 1940 to Elsie Bowers and James William Stringfellow, a steel worker who served in the Royal Scots Guards during World War II. He was the eldest of four brothers, Geoffrey, Paul and Terry. The family lived in Pittsmall, Sheffield until 1948, when they moved to Marshall Street. Peter Stringfellow attended Pye Bank Church of England Primary School. He failed his 11 plus and so attended Burn Greve Secondary School for one year. He then passed the exam for Sheffield Central Technical College and he left three years later at the age of 15 with a fourth grade technical diploma. When Stringfellow was 13 years old, he worked at a cinema on the Wicker Arterial Street in Sheffield. His first job after leaving school was an assistant tie salesman at Austin Road. After some casual jobs, he enrolled as an apprentice in the Merchant Navy at the age of 16. His Merchant Navy career lasted for just two years. On his return to Sheffield, he worked briefly in various jobs while at, Dolsbin, while at Dobson's Furnishings Company. He was convicted of stealing stolen carpets and served two weeks in Armley Prison, Leeds, in June 1962, and six weeks in Ford Open Prison. After his conviction and imprisonment, he was unable to find regular work. This led to the business career running clubs. In 1962, Stringfellow rented St Aidan's Church Hall in Sheffield every Friday night, operating the Black Cat Club. Several bands played in the club, such as The Pursuers, Dave Berry and the Cruisers, Johnny Tempest and the Cadillacs, and from London, Screaming Lord Such and the Savages. His fortunes changed when the Beatles played on the 2nd of April 1963. The demand for concert tickets was so great that Stringfellow rented a larger venue, the Azena Ballroom in Sheffield. On that night he sent the Beatles a telegram congratulating them on their first album, Please Please Me. In 1976 Stringfellow and his then business partner and brother, Geoffrey Stringfellow, sold the Cinderella Rockefellers to Mecca and moved to Manchester, where they opened the Millionaire Club. There were no live bands in the Millionaire Club. However, the Stringfellows hired named DJs including Peter Tyler and Brett Sinclair. In 1980, he sold the Millionaire Club to Granada Limited and he then moved his whole family to London. There he opened Stringfellows Covent Garden. It was an immediate success as a nightclub in London where celebrities, international film stars, TV personalities, rock stars, models, paparazzi and national newspaper journalists partied for the next 15 years. In 1983, he took over the old cabaret club Talk of the Town, which had closed. He reopened it with its original name, Hippodrome, and it became the world's greatest disco. The Hippodrome introduced its first gay night at the venue under his management. He also started Hippodrome Records and one of its acts, was to sign Dusty Springfield, who released the single Sometimes Like Butterflies. In 1986, he opened Stringfellow's New York, which was frequented by New York celebrities and managed with his daughter, Karen. In 1989, he opened Stringfellow's Miami and then Stringfellow's Los Angeles in 1990. He sustained huge financial losses due to the American economic recession in 1989. 
1996, Stringfellow's autobiography, King of Clubs, was published by Little Brown. It was serialised in the Baltimore Sun newspaper and became a bestseller. In 1990, Stringfellow introduced table dancing to his New York club with a licenses deal with Michael J. Peters. This became Stringfellow's Presence Pure Platinum in 1996. Cabaret of Angels, a table side dancing club, was open for three nights a week at Stringfellow's Covent Garden. In 2006, Stringfellow opened the second adult entertainment club named Angels in Wardour Street, Soho. He was the first club owner to gain a fully nude license from Westminster City Council. In 2009, he criticised the Policing and Crime Act 2009, saying the licence and changes with regards to lap dancing were unnecessary and that he would be appealing to the European Court of Human Rights if his current licences were not renewed. In 2012, he was granted the necessary sexual entertainment venue, SEV licence, for String Velos in Covent Garden and Angels Soho, and was able to successfully market Angels as providing rooms for the entertainment in privacy of young women in lingerie. Stringfellow first appeared on television as a warm-up act on Ready Steady Go in 1964. He contributed to numerous programmes, both TV and radio, in subsequent decades. Stringfellow appeared on Noel's House Party, where he was gunged alongside Jimmy Savile. He appeared on a celebrity edition of Come Dine With Me in the first broadcast of 17th of September 2008. Stringfellow appeared... Stringfellow appeared in Season 1, Episode 2 on Trigger Happy TV. He also appeared in Season 15, Episode 1 of Top Gear, which was broadcast on the 27th of June 2010, where he had to help Jeremy Clarkson when he was stuck in a rolled-over Reliant Robin. He was a donor to the UK Conservative Party and supported a UKIP candidate in 2012. However, he publicly disav disavowed the Conservative Party in 2018 over Brexit, stating that the price is too high and said he would support the... The Liberal Democrats if the Conservatives' advocacy of leaving the European Union continued. Stringfellow was treated for lung cancer in 2008 but was healthy until he was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer in 2017. He died on the 7th of June 2018 at the age of 77 at King Edward VII's Hospital in London. So there's all the information there on Peter Stringfellow. What an extravagant life that man there, didn't he? Um, yeah, wow, you know, what else can I say? <laughs> but um, one thing I do know is that I've spoken to the staff here and he doesn't have a named memorial plaque, but the lady has told me exactly where he's buried and there's a significant way of telling, which she's told me about, so we will know exactly where he's buried. Don't forget this is a natural burial place, okay, so... Um, it's not like a cemetery where you have like headstones and things. People are just naturally buried here. Um, so we'll go to the location and we'll know where he is, obviously. And um, yeah, we should be there in a minute or two. It depends how long it takes me to walk through these woods. But I'm actually just about to walk through a big puddle. Nearly went. Um, I'm actually taking my time because I'm really enjoying it. It's one of those places where, just look, look behind me, look. There's no one here. It's amazing. It's beautiful. There's no one here. It's energy. It's earth. Sorry, I'm going to get a bit hippie on you now. But it's just that natural, no hustle and bustle in your brain. You know, like city life. Um, you know, I live in Portsmouth. I live quite slap bang in the middle of the city. It's just hectic. It's just hectic all the time. Traffic, noise, people, bleh, all the rest of it. Come to a place like this, your brain can switch off. It's just second to none. Anyway, we'll carry on, because I think I'm nearby. We'll see. Area 2, G2, which is where we are, and she said there's no plaque for Peter Stringfellow, but he is under the tree, just as you come in and turn left. It looks like someone's left some sort of 
mark or trace there. So going with what the staff members told me, uh, I'd highly, highly expect that's the one. So there we have it, G2 under the tree with the bird box on. It's where uh, Peter Stringfellow is. There is no marker for him. I've asked the lady, she said there's not one, but she told me exactly where it is. So we're gonna pay our respects to, to Peter. We'll just touch the ground here. Thank you, Peter, for all the hard work that you put into the nightclub industry. I'm sure there's many a lady out there and grateful for the work that you gave them. And I'm sure there's many a men out there grateful for the work that you uh, put <laughs> into the ladies' pockets. Um, what a character, that's all we can say really, isn't it? So thank you, Peter, uh, for all the work you've done. Now don't forget, if you ever went to Stringfellows, um, leave a comment down below. Not that you probably want to admit it if your wife watches this at all, or if your husband does, if you were a lady and you went there. Um, but you know, if you did ever go to Stringfellows, I want to know, did you go to New York? Did you go to Miami, Florida, London? Whereabouts did you go? Or did you ever meet Peter Stringfellow? Or ever just see him somewhere? I don't know. Leave me your comments down below. Okay, and um, if you like the video today, don't forget, give me a thumbs up and hit that notification bell, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I will see you all on the next one. Take it easy.